Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for April 23rd, 2021, Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern. We have a reverse aging call tonight at 9 p.m. on this line. It's really important for us to be absolutely aware of our minds. And once we get to a, to a you know, you, all, you, all, you carry on a conversation, basically. You're communicating constantly. So you're, you're absolutely aware of your mind. So the mind is your servant. And you are the commander. And you're not the slave. The moment you choose to step away from this perpetual thinking machine, you will free yourself from its tight grip. And if the mind is your master, if the mind, okay, is your master, just send it love. And when it tries to you know, guide you, direct you, or push you, or along with its ego assistant, just say, no, thank you. You'd be amazed what happens. And you do this from the heart mind, and you practice this. You get to the point where you're doing it from the heart mind. At first, it's kind of, you know, it kind of seems funny or strange or a little uncomfortable because it's not our comfort zone that we're used to being in. Say we just kind of allow the mind and the ego to just master us and tell us where to go, what to do, how to do it. And it's, it's time for the civilization, many of us, to come to the understanding and the conclusion that we don't really care to have the mind or the ego be our masters. We are the commanders and the masters of them. We aren't yet. Many are not, but you, once you acknowledge that with yourself and understand that, this isn't a, uh, an anger or a frustration, anything like that. It's an understanding that, you know, who's been in charge with us? Who, who, who is it? It's, it's nothing outside of us. It, it is the mind and the ego. At varying degrees, you know, just everybody's different, but we all have them. We're not exempt from them. And so when we begin to understand this for ourselves, then we pay more attention to it, say, oh, you know, here goes the mind again. Here goes the mind. You know, hey, mind, no thank you. I love you, but you're not the boss. You're not the master. And so gradually, gradually, a little bit at a time, the mind and the ego start to become more aware of their place. And it's they aren't really aware that you are moving into your commander spot. It's very subtle, but it's amazing what happens when you get to the point where you acknowledge and you're consciously aware. Okay, here's there's a mind. Okay, mind, you're you know you're getting carried away here. You know, no, thank you. It's just so important in this uh, massive. Uh, step for the civilization. The Ganga, the, the, the a quote, the choiceless truth of who you are is revealed to be permanently here, permeating, permeating everything. Not a thing and not separate from anything. The choiceless truth of who you are is revealed to be permanently here, permeating everything, not a thing and not separate from anything. See, we're all spiritual energy that have taken form from the standpoint, as we call these bodies, physical. There's a, it's a divine orchestra of spiritual energy and consciousness happening all around us all of the time. Imagine that. A divine orchestra of spiritual energy and consciousness happening around, around all of us all of the time. 
we aren't always aware of it because our minds, our minds are so distracted and busy with those all too important things of this physical world. I got to do this. What am I going to do about this? Oh, I'm worried about this. Oh, no. What about this? Oh, geez. It's, that's how it works. It's only when everything stops from, from some seemingly random event that we are thrown back to our real selves and can see, feel, and taste the bigger picture. And in a, in, in a brief, in a few moments, the mind drops its game and we understand how divinely perfect everything is stilling the mind in these meditations we move into the now to still the mind to step outside the mind and the ego to leave them alone the synchronicity of this life how we merge from moment to moment into many different things to not value the gift of a human incarnation is like trading a diamond for a head of cabbage the divine perfection of the universal orchestra is always on a perfect beat and it's continuously humming along exploding into even more perfection especially when we are in a bad mood and cannot see it how or where it is happening all of us we're, we're, we're always within the womb of the universal beat we're always connected with everyone everywhere in every dimension of time and space all the time not once in a while this is perpetual this is always and when we open ourselves up to, to this possibility then each moment each of us are able to see the real truth we know how every moment can only be a spiritual merging experience of universal synchronicity and our soul's destiny so it's a, it's up to each of us to open up our minds and hearts to feel the connection with someone you know or would want to know who is very dead or very alive reach out to the wild free being who is somewhere in the universe just do it as an as an exploration to possibly awaken that same wild free being within you just pick pick anyone uh, who your heart would have uh, to stretch beyond its normal limitations to open up and connect with them invite that special person into your heart space and imagine that this individual is here now fully available to be with only you in this moment you can drop the doubting skeptical mind <clears throat> excuse me by just focusing on the vibration and feeling of trust okay so you can drop the doubting skeptical mind your mind by just focusing on the vibration and feeling of trust let your heart relax into the experience and reach into the emotional connection you most wish to have if you just practice this for even a few minutes you'll be surprised to find out that something magical starts to happen you may not realize the depth of the magic which arises initially yet stick with it for wherever attention goes energy flows whatever experience you have is what was destined to happen anything can happen from just this simple intention 
and practice to break through the limitations of our doubtful, time-bound mind. The inner journey you'll have is completely worth it in the end. In every moment, the universe is whispering to you. You're constantly surrounded by signs, coincidences, and synchronicities, all aimed at propelling you in the direction of your destiny. Denise Lynn. So in understanding this, it's, real, it's not difficult for us to understand how to do this. When you grip the mind, the mind is always thinking, right? Our minds are always thinking. They never stop. You think when we go to sleep, our minds are not still thinking? They are. 24-7, never stop. And a lot of people say, boy, I'd really like to just step out of the, my mind for a while and just let it be. It's like Steve Rapson in his quote, when I grip the wheel too tight, I find I lose control. When you grip the mind too tight, you lose control. And you got to understand that our minds, it's their job uh, to always be thinking, to always be planning and pretending and hoping and wishing and pondering and probing and dreaming and scheming and yearning for more. Basically, 99% of the time, your mind is busy capturing data processing and assimilating and creating new information. It's extremely occupied trying to make sense of all this data and learn what it needs to know so you can become, do, and have whatever you desire. So the mind is necessary to have an experience in this body and is vital for our survival, yet it doesn't know how to stop thinking and discover a permanent state of bliss within. So it, 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 it is indeed an, an awe-inspiring, analyzing machine that functions a lot like a computer. So guess where the computers came from? Our minds. Guess, guess where everything came? Our minds. The mind. The mind can process, assimilate, and imagine anything if given enough time. You can even figure out Einstein's mathematical equations to space and time if you had a few decades and a burning desire. And yet, with all its amazing power, there is one thing that our minds cannot provide for us, and that is everlasting inner peace. They can't. That's not something they are equipped with. The mind is useless when it comes to discovering the eternal spiritual source of joy, love, bliss, satisfaction, which is always at our core. Always at our core. The really interesting thing about our minds is that they only exist in the past or the future. Understand what that means. Our minds only exist in the past or the future. It cannot, it simply cannot exist in the now, where peace resides. It spends all of its time in the future or the past. Now you can start to understand why we are the way we are. The mind, it, our minds are incapable of remaining in a state of peace because all its yearning, striving, and efforting to arrive there just creates more feelings of lacking peacefulness. It is always trying to get somewhere other than here now. It is always wondering what's going to happen next or processing what has just happened. We dare ourselves to keep our mind present in the now for this moment try it just for a few moments that we'll do this and this is what we're the, the direction of these meditations is stilling the mind you let the mind reside only in the now and see what happens you know what happens life suddenly 
becomes more peaceful. You may have caught a glimpse at the crazy life that manifests from living in a mind that is continuously obsessed with past and future, all day long, all year long, all lifetime long. And with the mind in charge, we can never find peace. With our minds in charge, we will never find peace. The mind never stops. It never stops to rest in the now because it would lose its job. It operates from the perspective that the now is not okay in some way. And thus, it must always improve or change it. And this is the exact opposite of the energy of inner peace, which stems from us having a deep knowing that everything is always perfect in the entire universe in this simple, sweet moment. Have you ever wondered what your life would be like if you were truly free from the mind? I don't think many people think that. I, I really don't. I don't think they're, oh, what would it be like if I was truly free from the mind? Because the mind has got them so directed in the past or the, or the future. What would even one day be like for any of us? Imagine that that day is now, today. Birds are singing, and breeze is blowing, and you're able to hear, smell, and feel the beauty of it all. Now, of course, you could hear what the mind was saying if you paid attention to it, yet you choose instead to observe it and not get caught in its entangling dramas. Being the divine witness, that's what we are of the mind. We're divine witnesses. We're not in the mind. We're outside the mind. We're watching. We're witnessing. Watching it all from a higher perspective. You will find peace by dropping the mind every single time. True peace is a state of no mind. Not a state of mind. It's a state of no mind. You can either choose peace or mind. What choice do you make for yourself? And peace of mind occurs only when there is no mind. It is absolutely essential for us to know that our, mi our minds so well that we can transcend them. We can transcend our minds. So we need to understand how to let go of our minds so that we can find peace in any moment, any time of our lives. And you start with the trusting. Trust the process of letting it go. Trust it that you are on the path to finding total freedom from the constant chit-chat in the mind. This is a choice, and it is the first step on an infinite journey. A second step that we choose to take is knowing that our minds are connected to an infinite divine intelligence that it is always leading you towards enlightenment, even if it doesn't look that way. The third step you take is to imagine what it feels like to be free from your past, future, all your desires, inhibitions, fears, doubts, worries, and expectations. Just imagination is, is employing the mind. Our imagination is employing the mind. Yet, what other tool do we have to use to free ourselves from its grasps on ourselves. So you keep imagining what it feels like to infinitely dive into a permanent, permanent feeling of freedom. Once you can imagine this and hold this thought for several minutes, the real deal will soon follow. And find you. Ultimately, 
we all need to use the mind to drop the mind. Interesting, isn't it? We all need to use our minds to drop our minds, to find total freedom in this life. The mind has to step down from its pedestal and get out of your way. Yet who is going to coax it to step down? You are. And this decision to choose freedom over everything is the key. Choosing freedom over everything is the key. You'll soon find something amazing inside of you when the mind surrenders and you turn inwards towards the divine spirit that you already are, have been, ever, beyond, and forever. So you choose, relax, and bask in the light of this eternal peaceful experience of pure being. Once you realize that this is available in each millisecond following your daily mind chatter is the last thing you're drawn to do. And the mind is awfully interesting and yet the major block in the way to finding true freedom. When we drop all of our attachments to it, we begin awakening to a much bigger reality that goes beyond the walls of what is inside and outside ourselves. When we deeply realize that who you are is not your mind, nor your thoughts, nor your emotions, nor your body, then the awakening process begins. Start with finding the silence between each thought. The space between ideas speaks to each and every one of us in a way that goes beyond what can be spoken. And by listening to this gap between words, this ordinary life suddenly becomes very profound and meaningful. It is only in this space of silence that any of us will find total freedom and the constant flowing river of peacefulness. We can see that the mind cannot exist in silence. The mind cannot exist in the spacious, infinite universe that is everywhere now. If you want to rid yourself of the constant struggle of thoughts and negative emotions in your life, keep surrendering to this silence. Surrender, surrender, surrender. Once you find the silence, the mind will relax, and you discover the foundation of your very being. Once you continue or confine yourself to this present moment, this moment, core, essential, foundational presence, your entire life is instantly healed and enlightened. When the mind disappears into the profound silence of the now moment, we will also discover that we don't really exist. The personality construct fades into the background, merging with the millions of other ideas. And you soon will begin to know yourself as this profound silence and realize you are this infinite, timeless essence that is always present no matter what crazy thoughts about. Even when the cacophony of your mind feels almost deafening, this silence of pure beingness continues to permeate everything. The more you allow your mind to quiet, the more you can tap into this ever-deepening peaceful energy that is your true nature. We are all naturally this vast calm reservoir of silence. Even when our minds cause ripples on the surface 
of this lake. The stillness at the core of our being is never touched. Try it over the next several days. And spend as much time as you can every morning when you wake up and every evening before you sleep and diving into the gap between your thoughts. Rest deeply into the silence and you will find between each word the silence. Simply close your eyes, focus on the space that exists between each thought. Not that, not notice that in this space between your thoughts, there is only pure consciousness. So relax into this consciousness. If your mind gets busy, which it will, the space will be a very tight, small gap. Gently return to relaxing the body and diving into the space again, 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 and again. Keep diving into these tiny spaces and eventually the mind, your mind, will slow down and the space will expand. You will one day find this amazing ultimate freedom from your mind. Just keep surrendering to the process. It is a big one. And know that the result is an ultimate freedom from all suffering that will make the rest of your life a living absolute magna glorious bliss so if you will go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted i'm sure we all are crucial for all of us relax your body relax it let go follow what i just shared with you let go of the body let go of all the tension all the stress all the fear all the anxiety this is the show it's the parade of shows that we're all put into by the mind. The mind creates the ego to assist it. So whatever, you know, it, it, you move beyond the stress, the fear, the anxiety, the worries, whatever, you know. After a while, that's what the thoughts start sounding like. And when you do this, you're practicing it, as we do this every day, you begin to understand that this isn't me. Why do you think so many of us feel out of place? It's not because we're not in the, you know, we're not in the direction we're supposed to be. It's because we're uncomfortable and don't know it that the mind is our master. We know we're seeking something, right? And what are we seeking? We're seeking the peace within us that is outside of the mind, the ego. It's all of this stuff, your body, everything. So when you relax that body that you're in, and you let all that stuff go because it doesn't serve you the greater good. You know it doesn't. We all know that. When we have that, you know, it's like the mind saying, no, you're going to let go of that. Don't let go of that. Hell, hold on to that. you got to hold on to that. So you let go of it. And your body will just fold away. It'll just go into complete silence and relaxation. Because you're not in it right now. You're... The body's leaning into you. You're the God. Understand that. Right? The body isn't you. So when you relax the body, it, it literally leans into you, and you are the God, the God source. So as your body leans into you, it just completely relaxes. Right? And when it completely relaxes, guess where we're at? We're in the now. That's where the now is. Because you know darn well that your mind will not go because it can't survive in the now. 
It'll either be in the past or the future. Either. Either or. Always. So when you move into the now and your body is completely relaxed and it's leaned into you, the God source, and you've moved into the now, the space between heartbeats, everything is the now. There's no future. There's no past. There's just the now. That's the sequence. That's the primer for us to stay in the now. Silence the mind, the ego, the subconscious mind, all the, all the chatter, all the activities that the mind's engaged with. That's where our bliss is. That's our natural state of being. We just haven't been there really, maybe touched it a few times. So as we are in the now, here's, here's the heads up. Some of us will be, by the mind, by our minds, seduced into the past, right? Because remember, the mind is only in the past or the future. It cannot be in, it won't be in the now because it knows it won't survive. Some of us are seduced because we are the servants of the mind. So we'll go into the past and we'll just sit there, we'll stay there. Now, it doesn't exist, it's gone, Say. But the mind convinces us that no, it's here, it's here. Okay? All these carcasses and bones in this elephant graveyard, it's all in your past, it's all here. So guess what? Some of us will take that past, we'll bring it into a future that doesn't exist, even though the mind says, Oh, you did this, this is it. and you will create the future from that past and rhythm that past and that future, all due to the mind. This is why you get so confused. People get so confused. It seems like I just keep going in circles. And then some of us, because of the mind, okay, and knowing this is important, the mind will take us into a future that doesn't exist because the mind will wander. And it'll start creating things. When am I going to have this? And when is this going to happen? And when is that going to happen? You know, I have to have this happen. And if it doesn't happen, oh my goodness, what's going to happen here? So we stay in the now. The body's relaxed. It's leaned into the God that we are, the God source. We're only in the now. How do we stay in the now? We focus on our breath. Our breath is divine positive energy. Why is it? Well, for one, it sustains the vessel that, ho that holds the kingdom of God. And it also focuses us, relaxes us, eases us, strengthens us. It's phenomenal. Our breath is absolutely phenomenal. Now, if, if the mind takes you off, right, because it does with all of us, none of us are exempt. You say, okay, I'm in the now, I'm focused, and I'm great, I'm in the now. And then all of a sudden, the next thing you know, you're a blink, and then you're off here somewhere. But if you're, when you're consciously aware of that, you just say to the mind, no, thank you. And you just, you know, saturate the, the mind in love and say, no, thank you. And then you are back in the now because you focus on your breath. So you're watching your body. It's important that we see our bodies from a different perspective because we're all, we all only way we see our bodies is that we're in them. Isn't that amazing? It's, oh, you can't, you know, oh, you can't get outside the body. That's just crazy. That's that's fantasy. But you can from a different perspective. In the now, you're not in the body. You're outside of it. You're you're a spectator. You're witnessing it. You're watching the, the the mind, the ego operate, witnessing it.
you see these seven wheels of light running through the center of your body. You know, what are those? And he you know, says, I see it's at the, the base of my body's tailbone. It goes all the way to the top of the head. And they're really bright colors, too. There's nothing like these on Earth. They're just so brilliant and bright. And they all look like different flowers. And they all have geometrical, different geometrical uh, uh, signs in the centers of them. But they're all vibrating, moving, but yet stationary. They, they seem to be moving, but they're stationary. And I noticed that the red one at, my, at the base of my spine and my tailbone, that was quite interesting. That deals with my survival. Deals with your body's survival, right? And it's the root chakra, the Molodhara. This, this, this deals with my uh, career, money mindset, food, sense of belonging. It's connected to my, to my body's spine, rectum, legs, arms, circulatory system. And then I notice, I notice what blocks it. it. It's blocked by fear. You see the perspective that you're taking, right? This is real. This is, you're not fantasizing. Your, your perspective is, is that you're learning about the body. See, you're, you're looking at these energy vortexes, these chakras. They're etheric. They're etheric, okay? They're, they're vapor in the body. They're not, uh, they're not like a piece of wood attached to something, okay? And then you, 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 you're interested in this because you'd like to know. And you go to the orange wheel of light. And this is the sacral chakra, the Vajrasana. And this is your body's sexuality and pleasure. It, it's it's the, the body's connection and ability to accept others and new experiences. And it, and it gives the, a sense of abundance and well-being and pleasure and your sexuality and reproductive organs, your kidneys, your bowels, and your immune system. But what blocks it? What's blocking it? If it is blocked, that's our pleasure. It's blocked by guilt. Why would I have guilt? Look at the mind. Where do you think the guilt comes from? If the mind is mastering you, as it is just about all of us, in fact, every one of us, then you'll know. The golden yellow wheel of light, this, this chakra, this energy center, is the solar plexus chakra, the Manapura. This is our personal power, our ability to channel, to be confident in the flow of our lives. And, and it's directed to, as these bodies, self-worth, self confidence and self-esteem and and the physical association is your central nervous system your pancreas your liver your digestive tract your skin remember you are not the body you're not the body okay the body is separate from the soul okay the body was created to house the soul so the soul can experience in physical form, create its experiences to perfect its creation. And this is the anahata. This is our ability to love. Our love, our joy, our inner peace, and it's connected, to, obviously, our heart, our thymus, lower lung, circulatory system, immune system. And what, what blocks our bodies? What blocks these these emotions and these feelings and this flow. Grief. Grief. And then we move to the blue wheel of light, our throat chakra. And this is the Vishuddha. This is our self-expression. It's actually our ability to communicate. It's our truth. It's our self-expression of feelings, the truth. And it's our thyroid, respiratory system, teeth, and vocal cords in, in this body that we're in. And what blocks it? Lies. It deals with the truth and it's blocked by lies. Then we move the indigo wheel of light. This is third eye chakra, the ajna. It's our intuition, sense of purpose and direction in this life. It's our ability to focus and really to see the big picture. It's our wisdom, ability to think and make decisions. 
connected to our, the body's pituitary gland, eyes and sinuses. And we move to the violet wheel of light, the seventh chakra, the crown chakra. It deals with our cosmic energy. It is our direct connection to the God source, to us, to you. It connects you to the God source. See? What blocks it? What, what ego attachment? What is what? I don't remember. Ego attachment. What is that? What is the ego attachment? The mind. The mind blocks our connection to ourselves. It blocks the connection of the God source. See? Isn't that interesting? It's something to really ponder, isn't it? Curious. So we witness, we notice as we're staring at our bodies and we're seeing all of this happen. We're seeing as all this flow literally comes through the center of our bodies and we notice that there is an energy in there and that's the God force love light energy. What is that energy? It's you flowing through the body. It's you, okay? And obviously your, your divine positive energy, your breath is joined with that. And it flows directly all the way to the top of our heads. And it, we're, we're like this energy uh, fountain. And it comes up and it sparkles and flows above the, around the head and then back down, up through the, the tailbone, back up around. It's perpetual. We're in a, it's just an energy vortex. All of these chakras, they're energy conduits. So the God force, the God source, can flow through it, through the center of the body connecting to all the organs of the body, all the emotions, everything. But, and guess what? If you aren't aware of it, you're going to miss it all. Because the mind's got you so busy at everything out there, which is not our natural state of being. So we bring all of this to the top of our heads. Right? And we hold it there. So we use vibrational frequency with our, with our what? Our God source. And, and it is, I am, we are the God, we are the love, and we are one. And in that short period of time, we've compressed and concentrated this energy into omnipotently powerful liquid energy. And then we release it over the body's pineal gland. You're, who's directing this? You are the God source that you are. You're directing this orchestration and direction in the body. What's happening with the body. See it, feel it. The heart, mind's motion picture. Our pineal glands, the, the, the body has a pineal gland, right? It's important to us while we're in the body because of the fact that the pineal gland, when it's fully functioning and healthy, is literally connects us to all the particles of existence. It really does. Everywhere, anything, anytime, always and forever. Now, we, these bodies that we're in, they, they don't have fully functioning pineal glands yet. Okay? They will. 
And so when we release this omnipotently, just powerful liquid energy over it, and we understand that we look at, we view it from a certain perspective, right? So what does it look like to you in your heart, mind, motion picture? To me, it looks like a green ball rosebud. And when I pour this liquid energy over it, it just immediately, instantaneously transforms into this massive rose, fully bloomed, with multicolored petals and just, just, just intoxicating, wonderful, blissful uh, fragrance. And it sends out these shimmering waves to me and through me, which I embrace, which the body embraces. And it's just, a, it's, it's a, just, a, it's a deep, eternal love and peace and gratitude that just floods me. It floods me. It doesn't drown me, it floods me. And then I discover that it is, once I move into the now and out of the body, and I'm witnessing this, it is who I am. It is really, truly who and what I am. And, it, and, and I, I understand that it's not the body. That it's me. That I'm the rose. That I, the God source, am the rose. Permeating everything. So, all of us are consciously aware, or we wouldn't be here in this meditation. We're all consciously aware that we're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love, and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude. What does that mean, of and from? You're the God source, right? The deepest, deepest, deepest of eternal love and gratitude is you. You're the God source. You're consciously aware that you're this. Now, not all the parts of this of the collective consciousness are aware of this. And then we understand that these bodies, right? And I'm, I'm emphasizing this, that we are in, okay? We're actually not in them, so to speak, but they, they allow us to experience in physical form. The heart mind, the ego mind, the subconscious mind, the higher self, the spirit, the soul, the God, source, pure consciousness, all one. Who really created these bodies? You really like to know? Really, truly. The actual root of energy that created these bodies. You did. We all did. Doesn't matter what genetics, whatever, we, the collective consciousness, directed it to occur. So we seek out all the parts of us that are consciously aware. Because we aren't all consciously aware of the collective consciousness. Some are asleep, some are awake, some are just beginning to open their eyes. Doesn't make them any different, any better, any more powerful, any lower, nothing. We're all one. So we have the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archetypes. We have the ascended masters, Guan Yim, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh. 
Gaia, St. Germain, Sananda Christ, El Moria, Bandantia, Pell, Thoth, El Moria, again, Yahweh, Yeshua, many, many, many more. The archangels are a civilization that vibrate at a different frequency than we do. Now, we don't, you know, see them like we see each other, but we meet with them a lot, not just in this lifetime, but all lifetimes. And we don't really know it at first, but then it's usually afterwards, and it kind of dawns on us. It's just, you know, it comes from the heart, too, when this happens. And it says, that, that wasn't, that must have been an angel. And they, how, they, they, they deliver the same message to all of us, but in many different ways and circumstances. But it's always, you decipher it into the understanding that it is absolutely magna glorious to be alive in these bodies. It really is. And really no debating it. And then some of the bliss within us bubbles to the surface. And they can, they can surround us into tens of thousands. Because of their vibrational frequency, they can hold a large number in a small area. Ascended masters, they've mastered ascension into physical form, out of physical form. Just like they've gotten to the point where they can just open the door, which is the body, go in the body, experience and leave. It's like coming in and out. And they hold God form, pure consciousness. We have ascended into physical form to master physical form. We create our experiences well in this physical form so that we can perfect our creation. And if we get enough understanding, if we obtain it with ourselves, we will know that we are the light, so that when we choose to leave these bodies, we will not follow the light, because we are the light. So anything that follows us after we leave these bodies that is the light, we know something's up. And it's not something that we want to be a part of. Now, we reach out to and, and understand that the archangels, cherub and seraphim archetypes, and the set of masters are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude. So we reach out to all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, agartha, and beneath earth. All the rest of the civilizations that are involved with this planet at this time and have them. Yet, only those who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation and the complete liberation of this planet in all life, on it, in it, above it, and below it. And they come in the billions and they're with us now consciously. We call out to all of the light energy beings out there that are in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. Yet, only those who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation and the forming of the circle of light and the complete liberation of this planet. Now, they come in the gugaplexes. One gugaplex fills this universe with no space to spare. No sacred space to spare. They come in trillions of gugaplexes from trillions of universes from every direction. And collectively, they are all with us now, consciously. We call upon the off-worlders, the galactics, the celestials, Yet only those who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation. Formula circle of light and the complete liberation of this planet, Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now. Now we're only familiar with a smidgen of them. Over a thousand travel through the solar system every single day. 
trillions throughout the universe is every single day. Ones that we're, you know, kind of familiar with are Pleiadians, Syrians, Andromedans, Arcturians, feline, Zeta Reticuli, Norns, Greys, Draco Reptilian, Golden Pyramid Avion, many, many, many more. If you could sit in a room with as many species and civilizations that are just in this quarter of the galaxy, you would be amazed. Now, they've been assisting us in our evolution, enlightenment, ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. And they are with us now consciously. We call out to all of our loved ones, all those who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited, yet only those who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, forming the circle of light and complete liberation of this planet. And they come into billions and they're with us now consciously. We call upon all of the light energy beings who have decided to be housed in the following forms on and above and below this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now. Yet, only those who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and be with us in this now, in this meditation, in the forming of the circle of light. Now, they come in the trillions in shapes, colors, sizes, forms, configurations of which we've never seen. Never. As a matter of fact, we only see 1% of what is while we're in these bodies. Now, we're only familiar with a smidgen of them, fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, wood, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, the minotaur, and many, many, many more. And in the trillions, they are with us now consciously. We're all gathered, arm in arm, hand in hand, in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance, and we are all one. We are all God. We are all love. And our God force love light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. This is why it continues to intensify, and this is why it continues to expand. We aren't depleting. We are flourishing. We immediately form a massive circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, and this now, in this meditation. This circle of light is so brilliant that it grays out the darkness of sacred space. And it would take over a thousand billion suns in this solar system alone to even come close to its radiance. Where does it come from? You, all of us, who we really are, the God source, the God. That's what we all are. And that light is so powerful because it is pure, deep, eternal love. And we are flooding this planet. All of us, everything, all life, the highest supreme value in the universe, all of our brothers and sisters, everyone, nonstop. It's because who we all are, what we are. Remember, we are not these bodies.
but they're great to be in, aren't they? Good, bad, or indifferent. It's so different. Are you your car? No. Right? Car is just a vehicle and a tool to allow you to do things. Now you can see why these the the, 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 the vibrational frequencies of this planet and this and all life here cannot not ascend. The vibrational frequencies continue to ascend. The liberation is in absolute. No debate, no arguing. Absolutely phenomenal, magna glorious. And because of all of you, all of us, this is why it is happening. So we begin to ascend above this planet, as we do in this circle of light. We come into this massive ocean of glitter. Now, understand all of us gathered consciously, parts of each other. This glitter is flashing everywhere and just trillions of vibrant colors. It's faster than strobe lights. It's just everywhere, saturating us all, back and forth, inside and out, above and below. And so when we look at these reflective centers, the sources, we see these mirrors that you literally could fold into. And these perfectly etched mirrors we find that it is all of us communicating with one another, whether consciously or unconsciously, and we're all students of teachers of each other. We always have been, always will be. That's what's one of the most spectacular things about our journey. We are never alone. We are always interactive with each other. The gods within us are always communicating with the gods within every single one of us. We're immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column of light that reminds us all that we are the power of healing. You will learn this. Then we are met with the violet, blue, purple flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column of light that reminds us all of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. We're then we're met with the white fire. This is a column of light that reminds every single one of us. What protects us? The God within us, within these bodies. That's what protects us. But if, you're, if the mind has you in its grips, you will never know this, so you will be fearful and frightened of all kinds of things and then attract them to you. So this white fire armor emanates from our gods of who and what we are. And, and th these bodies are imbued head to toe inside now. And, and what does that mean? It means that no demons, no apparitions, no poltergeists, no voodoo, no, none of this external world, all of the things, the boogeyman and everything, can not harm us ever, period. Yet, only you, only you, only you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency low enough, through hatred, anger, fear, greed, envy, depression, anxiety, whether you do it consciously or unconsciously, you'll create a breach in your white fire armor, enough so to allow all the dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come rushing in. And if you do decide to do this, then you are met by the purple transmuting flame. This is a column of light that reminds us all that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame. We can transmute all these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutralized substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they're totally vaporized and are gone. 
Then we're met with the violet ray. This is a column of light that reminds us all that we can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame. We can literally cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor, restoring our vibrational harmony of the gods that we are, of pure, deep, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. We are then met with a golden white pink light. This is the column of light that reminds each and every single one of us that we are the sun. We are the sunlight. We are the rain and the rainbows. We are the clouds and the sky. We are the sunsets and the sunrises. We are the trees and the forests. We are the animals. We are the soils. We're everything. So the next time you catch yourself in awe of a sunset or a sunrise or anything, all the grandeur and beauty of this planet, and you're just amazed at it all, its expansiveness, its divineness, it is you. It is the God that you are that you're in awe of. Because what you're looking at is the God. which is you. We continue to descend above this planet. As we do, some of us step out of our physical forms because we can, and we float effortlessly above them if we're carrying physical form. We come into full view of this massive crystalline light tower. We all created this tower. It's larger than the solar system. And in the center of the column, we see this massive oblong sphere. In the center of the sphere is a golden white sparkling bowl of light. And surrounding it are an infinite number of rings, vibrantly colored, all sparkling, and all of them are sending out these massive mist waves that saturate us soul, that just you can feel it just lightly touching your skin. It's kind of a warm mist. And when it does this, it penetrates us, it saturates us, and the golden white bowl of sparkling light is deep eternal love. And then follows deep eternal gratitude and peace and well-being. And abundance and prosperity and joy and bliss and tranquility and benevolence. It's endless. And we discover it is the God that we are. This is our natural state of being, not out there. And your suffering will all end once you get into that understanding and stay there. At the top of this crystal light tower, we designed it so the golden ocean can come cascading down over all of us saturating all of us, all life, the highest supreme value universe all over this planet, in it, on it, above it, and below it, perpetually, always, as it's doing right now. And we are all drops of this golden ocean. We hold the essence of this golden ocean. And the golden ocean is the drops, and the drops are the golden oceans. And the only illusion is separation. We see our meditative sphere. It's that center circle. We all created this sphere over three years ago. It holds over 1,300 of our meditations in perpetual motion, hundreds of millions of us, every day, for over three years, on and off world, in the greatest intent of deep, eternal love and peace, all consciously aware of who and what we are to a certain extent, liberating this planet and all of us, all civilizations, in it, on it, above it, and below it. This is why this sphere can be seen, heard, and felt, and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. And this is why it continues to intensify, and it continues to expand. There is no escape from the ascension in the higher frequencies. We are moving into other realms. We are moving into other understandings. We are the love. We are the God. And thank goodness for these bodies. 
so that we can do this. Feel it, all of it. Feel all of it. The bliss, the joy, the, the happiness. Feel it just. Drink it in. Trust in the God that you are. Trust in the universe. I'll join you in the meditation. I'll return to close this out.
take an easy breath in through the nose. And an easy breath out through the mouth. Move easily and slowly. Choose to understand that you are the God. You are not the body. We've gotten switched around thinking that we are the body. Body is a great vehicle for us. We can experience so much, learn so much. It's just a magnificent vessel that we've created for the gods that we are. So you're not the body. The outside world is not you. All of your personality, all of your character, all of the things that you believe are you, are not you. They're the body. And once we understand this and, and actually choose to be in communion with our God that we are, then you'll discover what it is to leave the mind and the ego and they become your servants gladly. And the more that we learn to stay in the now, they eventually won't be needed. Take this with you for the rest of the day, into the evening and night, and the following morning. We will be back here April 24th, 2021, at 3 p.m. Eastern, Saturday, to continue our Global Guided Meditation call. And tonight, quite an interesting call tonight, on a reverse aging call at 9 p.m. Eastern.